parmesan for dinner. Well, I think this chicken dish is really good and it's again easy. It starts with a boneless skinless chicken breast, a tomato sauce, I happen to bake some because it's really fast and easy, but a good tomato sauce that you like out of the can works with some cheese on top, melted in the oven. Oh my God, and you can do it in advance, it's great. It's adult friendly and kid friendly too. So anyway, uh, I have a pan on medium high heat to which I am going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in because I want it for the flavor. I have some chicken breasts that I have already pounded out so that it's an even thickness at the top and at the bottom of the breast. Now what I'm going to do is season these evenly with salt and pepper on both sides. I like fresh cracked pepper and then I'm going to dredge these in a little flour and then into the pan they go. Okay, now a simple dredge with some flour. Hot pan, you want to make sure that your pan is hot enough because if it's not, then you're going to end up with a soggy mess of flour. It just doesn't work. The flour turns out to be paste. And the way you can tell if it's hot enough is when you put the chicken breast in, if it doesn't start sizzling right away, pull it out, wait for it to get a little hotter. Well, let's take a look at our pan. This one looks good because you know how I can tell it's starting to turn white up at the top. Oh, it's got a pretty golden color on the bottom. And this one is the same, so I'm going to give that the flip. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit because these chicken breasts were cold. They came right out of the refrigerator, which cooled the pan down a bit. But they're looking pretty good. Now, a note on the tomato sauce, if you want to make your own, it's really fast and easy. All you have to do is a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of a pan, some minced garlic, put the tomatoes in. Um, onion is, I like onion, so you can chop up some onion, sort it to the quarter inch mince, and saute that with the garlic. Add the tomato, add a pinch of crushed red pepper, add some basil, oregano, and maybe some sweet marjoram and then cook that up for possibly, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It's a fast sauce. Then what I did with mine, because I wanted it for this dish and for some eggplant, is I uh, used the immersion blender on it so that I have a pretty puree. And that's gonna be perfect for this chicken and for the eggplant. And if you want just a little bit more flavor, add a little bit of chicken stock to it cook these about 75% in the pan, then they're going to go to the oven with the tomato sauce and the cheese on it to finish it. And it's, they're going to go to a 400 degree oven. That will melt the cheese nicely and get this cooked well. Now that that's golden on both sides, I'm going to put this in my oven proof pan. If you have, if you were going to serve it, say on a buffet, you wanted to do it in advance, put it in a, a, a pan that you can take to the table that's oven proof. That's a perfect way to do that. That's looking good. See how pretty that looks? Nice golden both sides. So that's going out. Now if you have a pan that's sort of borderline, not quite big enough, but almost, you can shingle the chicken breast slightly, but the basic bottom line is you want them as flat as possible, but it will take a little bit of an overlap by about a half inch to an inch or so. So another way to tell they're done is, to, you know, or if they're getting real close to done, is take the chicken and bend it back a little bit so you can see into the middle. And that is really close. If I were doing just enough chicken breast to fit in the bottom of this pan, like four or five of them, then what I would do is I would turn, put all the chicken breasts in, turn them, and then when they're 75% done in the pan, 
put the tomato sauce and the cheese right on this and put it in the pan. If it's something that's going to be plated as opposed to on a plot or say for a buffet or family style on the table. So that's another option too. And then the pan goes right to the oven. Makes it pretty easy and it's a one pot wonder, you know what I mean? Now, I do want to, because this tomato sauce is quite thick, I'm going to thin it a little bit, but I want to thin it from the pan dripping. So I'm adding a little bit of water to the bottom of the pan, deglazing the bottom of the pan by scraping up all the brown little bits. Could deglaze this with some wine, either probably white wine I would say with the tomato, or red wine would work, or marsala would work too. That's all off the bottom and you can see that is going to add to this tomato quite nicely because that's a nice beautiful golden color. Alright, so now in goes the tomato. Okay, so that thinned that tomato sauce out to a really nice consistency. That is warmed up. I'm going to turn the heat off to pull this pan forward. And what I'm going to do is a few spoonfuls of sauce over each chicken breast. I'm going to save a little bit of the chicken or of the tomato sauce. I'm going to hold a little bit back so that I can use this on the bottom of the plate. But I want the tomato sauce to go to the oven so that the chicken breast picks up the flavor of that. Okay, now for the cheese. I sort of like a little bit of cheese, nice melty gooey cheese on top. I'm using mozzarella, fresh mozzarella would be good. Uh, Monterey Jack would be really good. Dusted with a little Parmesan Reggiano, that would be good too. Provolone is good, but it might be a little bit strong for this. Okay, so anyway, now that that is covered nicely with cheese, I'm going to put it into a 400 oven. It's probably going to take about five, seven minutes until that melts beautifully. Oh my! Well, doesn't this look absolutely heavenly? This only took about seven minutes in the oven. And seven minutes got a nice sauce going. It melted the cheese perfectly. Now I'm just going to sprinkle this with a little fresh chopped parsley for some color. How's that for easy? Anybody would love that. And you know what? These freeze really well too. If you have extra and maybe you're going away or whatever the case may be, you can put them in the freezer. But they will last for up to seven days in the refrigerator. Now what I've also done is as a takeoff on that theme, I've made some eggplant for my vegetarian friends. And I cut the eggplant in about a good solid half inch thick piece put it on a, an extra virgin olive oil sheet tray into the 400 oven until it's soft, took it out of the oven. Now I'm layering it up with the tomato sauce and some mozzarella. So the same thing's going to happen with this. And this too is really good. Without noodles um, or with noodles, it makes a really good eggplant parmesan. But anyway, the, it's endless. You could do this with zucchini, all sorts of variations on this. but. So this is the chicken one, and I think this is going to be served either over some noodles with a little bit of tomato sauce, or be good over rice too. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope you give it a try, because I think you'd be really happy with it, and I hope you get the kids to eat it too, because the kids are going to love it. Thanks for joining me.